Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, we are returned, and we're in the jungle. It's Billy Cultist making dreams, making more jungle stuff. And forgive us, forgive us, great mortally, for we have sinned. The air conditioner is on again. Uh, if you can hear that in the background, I'm super, super, supremely sorry. But I'm also not sorry because it's super hot in the Midwestern United States right now. At least the part that we're in. So, yeah, the air conditioner. Anyway, Marty will do his best to mask that out, but you know. Uh, we're back in the jungle. Uh, I kind of got a little announcement, as always, before we keep on going. At the moment of upload of this, or uh, recording, actually, this video, we are now at 666 subscribers! So, that in mind, if you're some kind of uh, Satanist or something like that, I guess this would be a great time for you to subscribe! Or at least consider it, because it's, it's never been so demonic on the channel, I guess, right? 666 subscribers? But anyway, it won't last long, so you better subscribe now! Uh, uh, now, I, I want to make some more announcements related to some stuff, scheduling stuff going forward. We are starting to get over overloaded with things in real life, outside of the YouTube thing. And this is going to lead to uh, some cuts in scheduling, which I don't know if they'll actually be very noticeable. We're of course not going to cut any of our dreams content off YouTube, really. We're going to keep on making, you know, th I'm going to keep doing this kind of thing. And, of course, there'll be the weekend tutorials Jimmy will make about, you know, making logic and dreams and stuff. But going forward, we're probably going to see less during the week, especially in terms of Let's Plays. We are still going to finish Elden Ring, each one of us, but we're probably... I I had started a Tears of the Kingdom playthrough, but I, with things the way they are now, I don't think I'm going to be able to continue with that, unfortunately. And... Jimmy's probably not going to even start it, because, yeah, like I said, we've got real-life stuff piling up on us suddenly. And so... That's what it looks like going forward. Uh, pretty much less Let's Plays. We're going to still maintain the same uh, Dream stuff, like I said, though. So don't worry about that. I think that'll be fine, because genuinely, it seems like most of you viewers engage with this Dream stuff anyway, more than the Let's Plays, so... Hopefully nobody's super put out about that. Sorry to anybody who would be, but anyway, here we are in the jungle, no more wasting time. Last time we put this, this sky into place, into position as a fake sky. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, coming back into this, I noticed something about this sky. That is, I'm thinking, my wheels are turning, and I'm thinking, I like, I like the way it's working. It's working as, as I want. However, we have this at the edge, and I think I know a way I could actually do this over again and make it work a little better. And I'm going to go ahead and try that right now. Open up my paint. We'll get normal fleck. We'll get this nice solid fleck. Courtesy of MM back in the day. I don't need to actually open up the coats. It's not going to matter, but we'll get this set up here. And I think in the last video I took all this, what we're going to do is we're going to create kind of a dome. I took a lot of efforts to I'll just line that right there. We'll just make kind of a, yeah. I took a lot of efforts last time to be I'm trying to think while I'm doing this painting. It's not easy, but not for me anyway. Some people are better at multitasking. Anyway, though, I, I think I took a lot of efforts to get this thing perfectly flat. But, I'm just... We had the right idea last time. These are good. This is a good method to achieve the fake sky effect I think I'm gonna want. But... But... Just a little... Yeah, I'll make that dome like that, and then what we'll do is we'll... We don't even have to have this perfectly flat. Just make it big, get it on there like that so it covers that up. See, this may work 
put another one so there's no holes in that. There we go. I think this will deal with that problem of stuff poking through where it's not supposed to. Turn up the glow. No light emitted from glow. We don't need light emitted from it. That will mess everything up. Let's go play mode. See how... Okay, so yeah, so... Yes! That pretty much took care of the issues I was having before with having to clean up that edge. But yeah, this sky is looking good to me. I'm liking the way it's looking. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm not sure if I might... I was thinking of before, I was thinking of changing it from white. You know? But I'm honestly not even sure anymore if I want to quite do that. We will stop this now. Reverse time. I'm not even sure. I kind of like the white look. I don't know why. That's kind of... We'll brighten it up just a bit. Yeah, I like the bright. Kind of the bloom on that is fine with me. There's a few things I might do up here in the canopy, especially at these edges, and see where these are very wide. We could do a few things with some paint. Which I might as well do now. Why not? But what, well, I'll get the dots. These are often my go-to for leaves. As you may have seen, if you've been watching my ways... Anyway, let's, let's, uh, I don't know how tedious this will be. I, I guess if it, if it is to be tedious, I might find a rant. I don't know. I ranted about conspiracy theories last time, like goofy ones, like the moon landing hoax and the, the flat earth. I think we can't do that again. We already did that plenty. Well, yeah, see what I'm doing here, though? We're gonna put some of that and just give a little more some light light leaves covering out into these areas that way this could be tedious I guess I really want this though even more so yes now the thing about this scene in particular is the way I'm doing it the intention behind it now this can all change, okay? And I, I talk about, you know, there's not really hard and fast rules about things, and it really, it is contextual a lot of times. It's like, what you're planning on doing with your game is gonna dictate how you're gonna have to approach making this kind of stuff. So, what I'm doing, the concept is if, if you were to make a game with this scene, you would not, the player would not be climbing trees, you would not be seen outside of this canopy. because. The illusion's gonna get broken if you come up into this and see all this stuff. Because it's not it doesn't look as good from up here. I mean, maybe... Eh, yeah, not really, though. It's not tailored to look good from up here. It only looks good from down under the... Under the canopy, down in the jungle depths. Now, what I... If you want to make something where you have all this is also going to be visible, that would probably require a lot more work than what's going on in this particular scene. For my needs because you would have to probably want to make you know you'd have to make that would require you to make a whole sky you know set up and frankly that'd be kind of painful because you'd have to figure out yeah how to get this to look you'd have to deal with what i was talking about in the last video in a little more depth because i don't think there'd be as easy a fix for it what i was talking about last time which was the issue that comes up oh, is that you have dreams is skybox and you want a certain kind of atmosphere and it's like if you make if you make dreams the built-in sky sun sky if you make it all blue and whatever that's fine but the problem is it makes it harder to get your deep deep under the jungle atmosphere and that if you're going to have a game where you're constantly, where you're maybe moving back and forth between these two levels, Dream Sun Sky is not the greatest for smooth transitions, I find. And, and you know, I mean, it all depends on how realistic and seriously, or what you know, what the style is your game is, because it could work for something that's highly stylized, probably with more ease. 
Another reason, that's another reason why in Dreams I like to pursue a more stylized and uh, often times somewhat simplistic approach to modeling and making these scenes because the hyper-realism thing is doable. It just, it just creates a whole lot of problems and issues and especially if you're gonna make a working game with it. It's great for like those art piece type things where it's like look at this just like feast your eyes on this detail you know it's like that's pretty neat but you know can we can we have an actual platformer with that level of detail you know that's got any semblance of really intriguing gameplay you know there's probably a way i mean it's like i've said this before it's all balancing you just gotta know what how to balance this stuff out it's like and you got to be very crafty about how you set your game mechanics up it's possible to make an interesting game with a low level of mechanics and I that's what I'm saying too it's like I think that if you make most likely if you're gonna make a game with that ultra realism level of detail in it in dreams not that it's not possible but it's like i think you're gonna have to make a pretty it's gonna be heavy on the visuals and it's gonna be probably gonna necessitate you being simple on the mechanics because those visuals are gonna eat up your your system or whatever you're gonna need space for all that so you're gonna have to go easy on the logic side of it and therefore you have to go, go easy on the mechanics side of the game but you know Clever enough, it'll be it'll be something you can do. If you're clever enough, you can make a game with fairly simple mechanics that's also intriguing, and then you can make it, you know, really insane hyper-realism stuff. Anyway, though, I guess I did find something to rant about. Now we've got... I'll take a look at those. We'll just get out of that for a second and see if how it's looking from below. Yeah, see those kind of, I kind of like, you know, it kind of puts some of that in there. Some of that detail going on there. I might put a few different kinds of flex up there too. I feel like at the edges we need a little more... The dots aren't quite cutting it. So we'll stop this. Go back reverse time. Wait, wait. press play again. Get up here. Get into these. Another good one for... Foliage is this this particular one, and this one's definitely more opaque, but it's got a nice rough natural edge to it. This splat. So what? And where I really want it, like I said, is here around these edges. Around these edges is where I want it most. I would get in. Okay. Okay. At any rate, this, yeah, see this? This is the area we need it most. Uh, we had a viewer, I, I mean, I had a viewer, Marty tells me, comment on my last video. One of you, the viewers, suggested some things, which we'll probably, we'll, we will probably get into some of that. Maybe even in this video, I don't know. But suggest, you know, you know, there's more details to be added to this. And that is true. And frankly, here's another thing I'm going to tell right now. Uh, there's kind of when you get into these, there's kind of no limit to the stuff you can think of to add to them. You can go on and on. And sometimes you got to watch out for that because you'll go too far. You'll be I can add this and I can add that and I can add that. And sometimes you got to rein yourself in. This is not to say that you can't, you know, but I'm saying sometimes, especially if you're making a game, you really got to know when to rein yourself in and be like, well, that's that's enough. That is enough. We don't need to go any more on that. Because if you don't, like I said, it's you're going to mess up the balance and you're going to have trouble. you got to limit yourself a little. Got to know when to stop. Over, you can overwork it. Okay, let's take a look. Play. How? We, yeah, that did that did what I wanted. 
Yeah, that did. It's a little bit... Eh, I don't mind it, though. It's a little bit... We got a little bit of a weirdness going on where it's kind of... There's this weird noise. I think that's because of the overlap of paintings, where our sky is basically a painting. I don't particularly mind that, though. It's given this weird kind of noise backdrop. Not sure how you would get around that, honestly, either. Other than... and it, This is a thing. Oh, a viewer suggested, as far as I know, that... You could use a text box, I think, for the sky. I, I'm not... If I'm remembering that right. Marty said that, I think, though. That's a possible thing. Text boxes can be used, too. The problem, though, is text boxes also can give you some weird visual artifacts. I've had problems with text boxes in the past, especially when they're used at distances and for, for things like this, where I had, like, the text box was just fully clipping at a distance. It would clip through... And visually, it, it wasn't good. I mean, like, look, if, if we don't like that, with that noise, it's even worse with the text box, where it was clipping through. I've had it, not in the same, not in a jungle specifically, but there was another instance when I tried to use a text box. They will be kind of weird, especially, like I said, when there's overlap with other things and stuff, and you're using a text box. So, yeah, be wary of a text box. Now, some other things I wanted to add, and they came up on the last video was, we want some god rays. I think... I really think, though, like I said, I think I really like just that white light. I was thinking originally maybe I'd have it be blue, but I kind of just like that. I don't know why. It strikes me as... I don't know, just more realistic or something somehow? I don't know why. Just that white light. Maybe it's because of the... When you're in the dark and you have visually with your eyes... You, you're looking from a dark space into a very bright, you know, like a sunny day. It's harder to distinguish. You know, it's like exposure. It's like exposure, like exposure settings on your eyes or whatever. It's, it just appears from in the dark. It just appears like you're looking at a, a very bright white window. But then when you approach the window or even go outside, then everything comes into focus you change from dark mode, you know? I don't know. Something like that. Maybe I'm the only one that experiences this. Anyway, we've got... Yeah, we've got some more stuff to do. But anyway, before we get into more details, I do want to mess with this sky. And also, I, there's some other stuff I want to do. I'm going to shut off time and get out of this. Let's go into... The good old sun sky and something I want to do... is I want to... Yeah, I, I guess... Here's the thing. If you really, really hate... This is a suggestion. I don't really mind it that much, personally, but if you hate what's going on up here with this... You know what? I'm gonna take a test and see if we can... Oh! Actually... So here, if you... If you decrease the bright glow of that, that kind of... Kind of reduces it, but you still kind of got it. But if you really hate that visual business that's going on with these paintings here, this fuzziness. The only thing I can think of off the top of my head that you would want to do is you'd have to use a sculpt for the purpose of what I was doing with paint. You'd have to actually make, like, a sculpt. That would probably take take care of it, I'm guessing. But I, I just don't care to because it doesn't bother me that much. So... What are we going to do here? Oh yeah, okay, I had that open. I want it... We want the fog. I like to do this, especially in some kind of deep, dark forest. We're gonna bring the fog... I'm gonna actually open this up. Bring it back. I'm gonna try 500. See how that works. Bring the fog in a little closer, because... I like... It gives the, the jungle kind of a humid feeling. Kind of a sticky, humid fog coming in. Excuse me. Take a look at that in play mode just to get the real effect. Yeah, see how that's a little more... Yeah, I like that. I, I like to... You don't have to do that yourself. 
But that's also going to kind of relate to the God Ray thing that's going to come up. Because I'm going to... I'm going to do my... What I typically do to do God Rays in a forest like this. I'm going to do it with spotlights. That's how I like to do it. Now a viewer did, as I heard, suggest you could use a fog thing. I don't know if I would do a fog thing myself. And that's only because... You could, ha you could have to use... I would assume several cylinders of fog. You'd have to use a number of those to achieve. Whereas the spotlights will basically give you god rays if you use them in an interesting way. But you probably could find some way to do it with fog if you really want it. But I will be using spotlights in this particular instance. Uh, here's what we will do. Oh, I do want to use some fog in terms of the jungle. I want kind of a you know, like a Dagobah mist along the ground or the lower level. You know what I'm saying? We will... Is the fog in here? Yes, it is. Maybe I'll better put this on. Snap. And like I said, make your, make your ambient effects. Make the gadget big, that way you don't lose track of it. In the confusion! Did I... I didn't even stamp it. Why did it stamp? But we gotta make it big. So we don't lose track of it. Actually, and, and on top of that, make it in a nice prominent spot where you can find it too. Even a big one can get lost. So, we got the fog. I do not want a sphere. We want a... Ideally, we're going to want either a cylinder. We'll go with... Well, I don't know. Let's go with a cube. See, a cube's going to be more easy to... Okay, I'm just going to use these because grabbing hold of it physically would be a pain. Zone fall off, zone size. So we're going to scale the Y down quite a bit. Well, like that. I'm going to move this down. Make sure we're in the... You know, we're getting the floor of the jungle sort of here. And we got the fall off area. We'll have it like that. We've got kind of this little crater valley in the jungle that we're, that's our playing area. So, fall off. No, we'll turn the fall off down a touch there. Well, actually, I kind of like that, frankly. And we'll see what we feel like about this. Now we could test the, uh... We call it the density. Ooh, highly dense. I kind of like it. We gotta, but we we gotta adjust fall off. Yeah, we don't want too much, too high. Fall off again. Uh, I'll bring zone size down a little bit. Oh wait, not not the size. We'll actually do this by position. Down, down a little bit there. Bring the fall off. This, this you can tweak this to your heart's delight. Basically, you know my settings don't necessarily need to be the settings you use. Let's give it a little look and see what we think of that in play mode. Okay, see? Kind of got this low-hanging fog that's kind of nice right through here. It's kind of fun. Atmospheric? Agree in the comments. By the way, if you've made it this far, consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. We want to get out of this demonic area we're in. We don't want to be at 666 subscribers, so... We want to be, you know, up, up higher than that, so we're not demons! Get us away from the devil's grasp. And again, you know, if you're if you are some weird Satanist or something, you could you could go ahead and subscribe now because this is the best time for you. Then again, I don't. Yeah, how will that work? Because if you do subscribe, you'll be taking yourself out of the demon zone. Because we won't be at six 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 anymore, will we? I don't know. But anyway, if you made it this far, do subscribe. Uh, consider the consider subscribing and uh, supporting us. Oh, there are means to support us, too, if you're a long-time subscriber in the description. But anyway, aside from all this stuff, we I like what we got going on here. We might add some movement, but I don't... We'll check and see. 
We will check. And we will see. Because you can add movement to this. Fog's fun. So, I don't know if it'll be very visible though. Noise and noise strength and scale. So the strength of the noise is how cloudy it's going to be and how like how visible that's going to be. And the scale, of course, is how small. And I think if we make it too big like we just did, it's not going to be really visible at all, so... Let's see. See how it kind of like, as you change the scale, you can see those areas? It's basically this... It's like a fractal of fog, where you don't... Some areas don't have it, and some areas do, and it's kind of moving. We'll see what it looks like in test mode. I'm not sure if I'm going to go with that. Yeah, see, it's kind of how it kind of has this undulating quality now. I'm not sure that's necessary, though, for this particular setting. I'm not... I don't think I'm too into that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. Anyway. We'll stop. And reverse time. I think I'll just go back to the fog, as it used to be. As she used to be! We'll go- well, the density was good. I'll take- yeah, the noise. Pull that back. Okay, yeah, I, I think I'll just go with the fog. The default color is fine too, I guess, frankly. Fits the greenery and the kind of jade theme we got going on. And as far as the sky is concerned, I think we're about done with that generalistic stuff. I want to get the god rays and stuff into it. I don't think in this particular sky, I, I believe a viewer was talking about putting clouds and such in there. That's There's ways to do that, of course. I don't... Personally, I like the way it is right now. This flat, and it's just poking through the leaves, and it's just this white. It's not even... I don't even think we actually have to put a visible sun up there. We could probably do that, though, if we really wanted to, but... I, don't, I just don't know that it's actually that necessary for me. I kind of just like the way it is. So, what we'll do is we'll put these... We'll start trying to put these god rays into this. We may need to, as we go with this god ray stuff... Like I said, we're going to use spotlights for this. And frankly, I might want to redo that with the snap two on. That way... That way, we, yeah, we get them straight up and down like that. Then turn on the precise move. That way that nothing goes... Excuse me, what's going on here? Oh, there. Okay. I might just scale it up just because. Yeah, so we might find ourselves... Gonna take it up above the canopy there. Just a touch. Widen it out, too. Eh? Yes. I'll turn it to white. Matches our sky better. Okay, that might be too wide. Eh, uh, yeah. Something like that. You can brighten it up quite a bit. There's a god ray, right there. Actually, we don't need that bright, probably. We'll adjust that a little. We don't want it too too intensive. That's pretty good. You can see a god ray kind of coming down, but it's not too much. And what you can do if you... You see how it's kind of... You want to intensify the leafy feel of it. So, we can use image. This is a good one. And what that image will do is it'll also break up the god rays. So you see you get kind of a... That one. That one's a good one, yeah. I use that one a lot. There, you got god rays looking down from above. And we could put like a couple, three more of these around the scene. I probably wouldn't put more than like three, maybe four maximum, because 
yeah, yeah. Overdraw with spotlights and stuff could affect your scene, make it run slow or bad or whatever. You don't want that for a game. Wow, we're going through the sky. This is something you have to deal with trying to manipulate these things. Anyway, though, we got to find more spots in the ceiling where we want these. I might bring it up too. Just make sure it's above the leaves so it has the effect of coming down through them. There we go. Yes, as you can see. More guard rays. Kind of put them in there, here and there. Find a place where you want some more. I might put some right over here. It's kind of hard to keep track of where this stuff is. That was over here, I think. I don't... That's a little too far. Like, right here. Grab that light. Yeah, right through there. And another thing. We might narrow this one down just a bit. Even more, and I might intensify it just a touch. Add some intensity to that particular area. Oh, that's coming down right on that tree. I want that more... Okay, we gotta move that out. See, it's kind of getting difficult to... Did I want to make... Yeah. How about right there? How's that? Yeah! That looks cool. But now we've got kind of our god rays. We could turn those to yellow if we wanted. That actually might add some interesting... Interesting kind of feel to this. To change them just a bit from the normal light. Nah, I think I'll leave them at white. We'll, um... What do I want to do here? Excuse this absent-mindedness. This is, this is kind of the experience on Dreams, at least for me. Okay, so... What we've got to do is we got to go... I'm looking for... I don't know if I wanted to blur that. Nope, Cast Shadows is good. I had something in mind I was going to do. It was related. Give it a test. <laughs> when in doubt, give it a play test. Oh yeah, I wanted I talked about that earlier. I was going to I was going to mess with the sun and sky. What I was going to do is maybe I was going to see if darkening down the sun a little bit that way we get kind of a little more pop on those areas with the god rays coming down. Maybe. I don't know how that'll work. We'll test it. But but you see? You see the god rays now? Looks pretty good. And since we got this fog, and since I jacked up the fog, or actually reduced the fog distance for the scene, for the sun and sky, because I did that, those god rays are more apparent. That is something that is a thing in dreams if you... If the sky is more distant, you won't really notice the god rays from the spotlights. If the fog is for the sky is more distant, but if you bring it in a little closer, like around 500, 200, you'll start getting those. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, I like that. That's good. Good for me. Pause to get this off. Backwards. Okay, we're still getting this. Sculpts. I don't see anything... I, I still don't see anything that's behaving unusually, like not showing up. But they're telling me there's too many sculpts on screen, so... I suppose that's the case. Where's the sun? Yeah, that... So what I was going to do is reduce the brightness on this a bit. Just a touch.
So that we, we might jack up the brightness on these spots. Just jack up the brightness a little bit here. Okay. Make me are these spots actually making it down to the surface there though? I don't think this one's making it. Oh wait, distance. Yeah, there. Okay, there we go. Some of they're not making it down, no wonder. I was wondering why we weren't seeing any effect. We need to have them. There we go. That's what I wanted. Might be a little too strong now that I see that, but we'll we'll work on that. Get this one down there. I, yeah, I gotta make sure they're coming down, otherwise, we're not getting what we want. Yeah, that's what we want. Where's the other one? I knew there was another one, right? Is this the one? Probably. Yep, this is the one. There we go. It's coming through nice. Okay. So maybe now we can reduce those just a bit. Because it's a little stronger than we need it. In some areas. I might leave this one because it's right in the middle. Kind of increases the... Well, that one's kind of nice too. You know, this area could kind of use... A light... Yeah, I'll move this light over. Over here, I believe. Try to keep an eye on where I'm at. Yeah, right there. Now I gotta... We're gonna take a look and see if what we've got going on in terms of overlap. For the... For the spotlights. Uh... Spotlights. Okay, so they're, they're kind of... It's not too bad, though. But I wouldn't go over four. You know, I'd probably go... Optimally, I'd shoot for three. But if you put too many, they're, they're going to start... Canceling each other out. You won't see them anymore. And they'll start... Also, they'll start running up, you know... They'll give you performance issues. Especially on a... Probably a PS4. So here we go. Let's give this a test... Yes. Yes. Nice. Very nice. I like that. Heavy on the atmosphere. Okay. And we've still got sunlight kind of coming through the trees in other places. It's just... It's super bright. And that kind of gives, I guess, you know... The levels of light that are coming through the canopy are different. Some areas where it's just coming down super bright. Now I'm going to... Again, this ties into what I was saying earlier, but this scene is not like a highly dynamic scene where you could have... I mean, you could kind of figure out a way to have the ch change of time of day in this scene. I don't know about having it change before your eyes, how easy that would be, but... I mean, you could definitely change it if you wanted by just controlling the light levels and maybe the angles of the light and sort of things like that. I kind of showed how I did this with another forest, which was not a jungle, but... The principles would probably be relatively the same. I made a snowy forest a while back, and I the, the, the video is still up on YouTube. It's a little different format than this. A lot more editing and stuff, but at the time, we didn't have as much... What do you call it? We didn't have as much space to use for that. But anyway, we got our god rays. We got our sky. I think we got this all ship shape as far as the sky and atmosphere and fog and all that's concerned. That's... This is where it's at for me. So from this point on, what we're going to be doing pretty much is just adding some more little details to this scene. And that will be the end of the scene. I don't know if I'll get all that done in this video, but I, that's where we're at in terms of how complete do I think this scene is. I'm getting where I'm pretty satisfied with it. We just need a few more little things like we might... Like a viewer did mention vines. I do want... You gotta have vines in the jungle. I do want some vines coming down. 
kind of hanging between the trees. If I can get that, be an interesting thing to make it look nice. And maybe, maybe to cap this off, we will maybe continue on and build a character. Like I mentioned before, I might build some kind of character and stick it in this scene so that we don't have just this blue puppet guy running around. Also, we have to remember, you know, things like the invisible walls and such. Another thing we can do, actually, that's not a bad idea either. We, um, no play, back out of this. Okay, rewind time. Now we got our sky poking through up here and our light coming from there, but in a sense, we kind of need some at the edges because you would get a little. So what we're gonna do with for that, what I believe we'll do is we'll make some kind of light fixture things that we can put beyond this wall. And what we'll do for that simple, simple method, just put a brick. The brick is temporary, so we don't need to care, you know, how much it costs or any of that. I'll just scale it up just a bit. We can actually scale this up after we finish it, too, so we don't have to worry about getting everything right now, perfectly sized. But I'm going to get some of these because they're, like I said, they have that leafy quality. Surface snap. I'm going to make them white. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to go for kind of a... Oh, wait a minute. I don't know if I want to paint this or not. Yeah, maybe it is better to paint it. But we're going to kind of get some... The sun or whatever, light coming through the trees look. And you can do it this way in certain areas. Just kind of put paint that on there. I'm doing it with paint. I'm not, I was going to originally do it with the stamp fleck, but I guess it's fine with paint. Okay, so we'll get off of that. Get rid of that. Take this brightness up. We do not need to emit light. Brighten it up a bit. And we can size it up a bit too. What we'll just do is we'll line this with our thing here. Yeah, there. So see, we kind of got a little light poking through. Might want to brighten it up even more. I don't know. Brighten that up there. You kind of got some light poking through at the edges, which, you know, you would see that. There'd be some areas where there's not... Kind of, you can move them around, move them up and down, put them at different edges. Switch them back and forth for some variation. Not too many of them, though, you know. We still want it to feel deep and dark and dangerous. So here we are. Okay. Got that one there. Let's give it a look. Yeah, I like that. That's working. Works for me. It's complimenting. We got some areas where the sun's poking through there. That's working for me. It's not all that way, but we've got some areas like there would I would expect to see some of those. Nice. They keep giving me that warning. I do not know. I do not know, friends, what sculpts are malfunctioning, but I can't see them when I look this way. They're telling me they're hap it's happening right now. Right before our eyes, but I can't see it. What's missing? Some plant or something is disappearing or not drawing properly or something? I don't know. I don't see it at all, but here we go. It looks perfect to me. It looks fine. Now all we got to do, I think, is we got to add a more art, little more artistic details. Maybe some more uh, undergrowth details we could add. We could add some bushes in here, here and there. I actually, I think we could add some pretty simple bushes with paint, frankly. So we'll... Go ahead and work on that now. 
the first time and oh I turned it on. Okay. I'm just gonna get in the paint mode. I'm gonna get the dots. We're gonna get on stamp fleck and we're gonna make sure surface snap is not on. We get our typical jungle green. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build kind of a quick bush out of these stamped flecks. Should be relatively low thermal cost. Kind of twirl these around there. I might add some more just to, yeah, some of these. Give it some body. Some variation to the feel. And yeah, keep in mind too, while we're doing this, and this applies to this whole scene. We're trying to make a jungle, but we're not, you know, I'm not, I, I didn't take an actual picture from, you know, the Amazon or something, and I'm trying to copy what's real. Like, you know, the plant species and all this stuff is not, in my scenes, I'm not, this isn't 100% accurate and all that to real life. If you want to do that, you can in your own thing. But this is not uh, hyper-realism time here with me. We're just trying to get the jungle feel. Kind of a vague, this is a jungle. It's not, oh, look, I know exactly what species, you know, the, the botanist among you who are also playing dreams and they want to do that kind of thing. But for now, this is just, so don't be upset if it's like, that's not the right bush. It's a bush. It's all it is, is a bush. It's green. It's in the jungle. It is a bush. There's bushes in the jungle. There we go. Okay, we got that. Could scale that up or down. Probably keep it around that size. And then just put that around. Now the thing is, it's not going to cast shadows, so I might want to put these in choice places where there's kind of already shadows, so you kind of can't tell about that. Oh, by the way, another thing we can do to it, although this might not be advisable on PS4, again, we can get into the fleck and we can increase the bushiness by... No, not that much, maybe. Kind of ruins the shape of it, but... Kind of increase it by doing that. You can fluff it up a bit, maybe. Ruffle it a bit. Eh, ruffling's not... It's got a nice shape, I don't really want to ruin it right now. Okay. Yeah, but like, you can do that. Put them in these choice spots, like I said. Because they're not casting shadows. So you can kind of cover that factor up by putting them in the shadows there where you can't really tell too much. I'm gonna kind of, what I'm gonna kind of do with these bushes is I'll kind of put them around the edge here. Kind of a vague visual boundary of where the edge of this thing is. Is these bushes. Scale them up a little bit there. There we go, that's a nice place. I'm gonna watch it and not put too many of them. I don't want too much paint overdraw. There's another edge, that's a nice area for a bush. Maybe two bushes. Okay. Yeah, right there. Here. And right up in here. We can put some in the middle too. I might size them down just a touch. There we go. Up by this tree. Maybe over here so the light can catch it. Over here by this stump. Maybe kind of up on the stump too. That looks nice. Yeah, I really like that, actually. Let's do some more of that. Maybe we can put one right on this. Fluff this. Very jungle-esque. Put one here. Kind of with these plants. Put 
It's Jumanji. Have you ever seen... Now, I haven't... I know there's a newer Jumanji with uh, Dwayne Johnson and a bunch of other people. I think it's Jack Black. I haven't seen those. I don't know how good they are. I know, uh... I have seen the one that was... Had Robin Williams, the 90s one. It's kind of weird. It's kind of fun. It's kind of weird, though. It doesn't really... But then, they were making a movie out of... You know, Jumanji is this book. It's a children's book. And it is... You know, it's something you have to do a lot of expanding to make a full movie out of, it seems like. Don't know if they did the bestest job possible, but uh, I don't know. It was kind of entertaining. And Robin Williams. He's usually fairly entertaining. Whenever he's in something. Okay. Although, Dwayne Johnson's uh, fairly entertaining, too. I have to say. But I have not seen the new Jumanjis. I don't know how well they are liked or whatever. Or how well they're made. Or how they stack up to the old... The one in the 90s. Okay, there we go. So we've got several of those. We may have enough now. I Now I'm getting a desire to put one right by that stump. I'm getting this desire right there we go. It's kind of hiding that orange plant though, which makes it superfluous. So we'll put it over here. How about... There. Let's do a little test. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yes. I like it. It's looking better. Like, we will need to put vines in here. Vines are going to be a necess necessity. But I like what we've got. Now, some of you might be saying that this jungle is a little bit spacious. I mean, you think of a jungle, you really do think... We're taking some liberties, though, as I said. And also... Keep in mind game design, because real jungles in real life, they are very, very thick. You know, the, the whole, oh, we're going into the darkest part of the Amazon, and we're going to have to hack our way through with machetes. It's so thick, you can't even see, you know, two feet ahead of you. And it's like, well, that's, yeah, that's realistic, but here's the problem. If you're making a game, unless it's like part of the mechanics or something, you don't want to impede people's visual ability so much. Too much, like, foliage and stuff. It's like, it, it, you gotta find a way to make it visually work. That involves taking some liberties with reality where you're like, well, this here is a lot more open than you'd probably, you'd probably get a whole lot more vegetation in a dense jungle than what you got here. I mean, under normal hardy growth circumstances or whatever. Assuming they haven't, like, gone through here and cut down a bunch of stuff or there's been a fire, I don't know, something has cleared things out. But yeah, what you, you take liberties in game design. You have to do it. You what you have to, what you're aiming to do is you're trying to get a feel. Make people think, oh yeah, this is like real life, but not it doesn't have to actually be realistic. Not fully. You can pull that off. And most games I think kind of do do that. Because like I said, you, you have to have a way... If this was as thick as a real jungle, we wouldn't even be able to see our puppet right now. We'd be The camera would constantly be going through garbage. And Now, like I said, unless you're making a game where it, the kind of the whole game revolves around the mechanic of cutting through this dense stuff, then you could maybe find a way to pull that. But I would recommend not... Yeah, just don't overfuel. Even if it's a heavy... A dense foliage scene like a jungle. Don't overstuff it with growth and stuff and see. And even the trees, you know, they're kind of widely spaced in here. They might be spaced a lot closer together in a real forest, but in order to make gameplay work better, we gotta have some room. We gotta have some wiggle room. But it still feels like a jungle, you know? It feels like a forest. I'm looking at this, walking through it, and I, you know, I feel like I'm in a forest. I definitely don't feel like I'm in a grassland or something. It looks, looks, you know, we got the palms, jungle, got the humid fog, we got all that stuff. Certainly. So, 
that's about where we're at. We added some bushes. We fixed up the sky. We got the atmosphere nice and cooking. And when we come back, I don't know. Like I said, we're, we're at a point where we're basically just adding some nitpicky details, maybe, as far as I want to go. That's probably what the next video will be, and I'm guessing the next video may end up being the last, at least as far as actually building the scene is concerned. Like I said, I may go and do a character for the scene specifically, and there could be, like, I don't know how many videos it'll take for me to sculpt a character for this scene. Depends. But, like, I would like to do that. Leave a comment about that if you're interested to see me sculpt a character for this scene. Yeah, don't try to tell me what to make for a character. I mean, you could suggest something, but I still like to have the free reign to decide what I want to make for a character. And if I really like a suggested, I may go ahead with that, but... Uh, we are pretty close to being fully done with actually building the scene itself, I would say. I, I want some vines, maybe I want some little details in here, like... I don't know, maybe some mushrooms or something like that we could add. Or some, yeah, some, like, fungus growing on the sides of trees, you know, little tiny thing like that, but maybe some dead fallen branches, I don't know, something like that could be a thing that we add, but we're pretty, pretty close to done. And at this point, for this session, I'm pretty much out of time. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I thank you, and I appreciate that, and you must really love it, and also I think you're probably smart. So... So, if you are here and it's the end of the video, which it is, make sure you give us a like and a subscription if you enjoyed. We need more subscriptions and more likes, and we appreciate all those. Uh, also, we appreciate all those people who are longtime subscribers, or even not longtime subscribers, but if you're digging into your pockets and trying to support us, EDC, with all this stuff, we really appreciate that. That's awesome. There's ways that you could do that, linked in the description of the video, and we really do appreciate that. And I'm gonna, uh, Marty can put, we're gonna put some credits for those people who are on the coffee. At the moment, there's only one, but put some credits for him who is on the coffee supporting us monthly. May there be many more, and you can get your name up there too if you go over there and get the monthly bronze thingy or whatever it is anyway though we appreciate all 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 of the affection and admiration and attention that has been given by you people who are our subscribers and supporters and we'll continue to do this stuff until next time this has been billy cultist bye bye